if you are a free-to-play player in rise of kingdoms in 2024 then this is the guide for you historically choosing to build more cavalry armies has been a pretty effective strategy for a lot of players and i would argue in the late game that that's probably your best choice as a free-to-play player so in today's video we're gonna go over the best civilization city skins commander investment order and equipment upgrade order including the new iconic tiers but first what's going on guys cheers now the first thing i want to cover in this video is something that I should have made a little bit more clear in my infantry guide for free to play players that I just posted the other day. Of course, if you're interested in being an infantry main as a free to play player, go ahead and check out that video on my channel and consider subscribing to the channel and liking this video so you don't miss the next one. But I want to answer the question, what does it mean to be a main of a troop type in 2024? Because in the past, you know, when when the game was basically brand new, being a main for a troop type meant that you only sort of built just that troop type for your armies and this was before the equipment system was in the game this was before the armament system was in the game this was before a lot of different systems and being a main of a troop type has sort of evolved over the years eventually it meant that you were running like a three one one setup meaning you would run three of your main troop type one of each other troop type and these days in 2024 if you're a free-to-play player what i would be focused on doing is running two of your main troop type as armies in the open fields and one of the other troop types so in this video we're going to be covering two main cavalry armies that are supported by an infantry march and an archer march and what the best strategy is and how you should get to that point in the end game the reason that i wouldn't recommend building three armies of the same troop type is because you're going to get a lot of different blueprints for a lot of different troop types and so it doesn't really make sense to not craft those things and the same thing is also true for your armaments right these are randomized and so you can't always guarantee that you're going to get only armaments with only attributes for the troop type that you really care the most about and so those things combined with the fact that the other troop types also have some insanely powerful commanders that you really need to have uh, you know in your lineup the 311 lineup just doesn't really make sense for free to play and also the reason that we're only running four marshes instead of five is because the probability if you're a brand new player that you're going to be missing some blueprints or you're going to be maybe missing some armaments or things like that you really want to run the best of the best that your account can manage and running around with a fifth sub optimal March that has a lot of blue equipment on it it's just not really you're going to get really awful trades with that and it's going to make your hospital fill really fast which costs a lot of resources and so really you just want to focus all your efforts on a small handful of the most effective armies that you can build in the game the next question becomes should free-to-play players choose to be a cavalry main in rise of kingdoms and I would say say that most likely in the late game cavalry is the best choice for free to play players and the reason for this is because first of all they historically have had some of the most consistent and best open field pvp commander choices in the game right and we're going to talk about those later in the video but on top of that cavalry have the highest march speed out of any troop type in rise of kingdoms which just by default will give you good mobility so you might have a higher probability of running away from another player who might be an infantry main or an archer main moving quickly in the open field is going to be very important especially as a free-to-play player so you can get out of bad positioning that way your hospital doesn't get unnecessarily filled too quickly also the commanders that cavalry have at their disposal like some of the best choices for you are commanders that are found on the wheel of fortune whereas other troop types might have some commanders that are in the mightiest governor that sort of flesh out their you know five army or four army lineup and it's just a lot easier for free-to-play players to get their hands on a wheel of fortune commander even if they can't spin the wheel a ton because gems are light at least they'll be able to get those commanders guaranteed as soon as they come around if they have just a small handful of gems available also some of the best in slot pieces of equipment for cavalry are things like the ash of the dawn and navar's control which you can get from the equipment chests here in the tavern and you're going to be opening these periodically for free i mean crystal keys are rewarded from events and a ton of other things redeem codes and things like that so it's not like with archers where you would either run a six piece set or a four two split between the archer set and the leadership set so progression for your equipment it's just going to be a little bit easier all right with all that out of the way let's start with your best civilization choices and just like in my infantry video the number one thing that you should focus on as a free-to-play player is Germany for a majority of your playtime. the only time that you would switch away from Germany would be when you're going into kvk in the late game when you're really going to be focusing your entire account on pvp your civilization choice is really a micro optimization if you go through all the different civilization choices you're going to notice that the bonus 
bonuses that you get here really are quite small when you compare it to everything else in the game right like getting your city hall to 25 maxing out your tech maxing out your commanders your equipment your armaments like this stuff right here is one of the last things that you should really be worrying about and for a majority of the time that's why you stay as Germany because they give you the 10 percent action point recovery bonus and this really isn't you can't get this from anywhere else right like getting troop attack you know you can get troop attack from a million other places you can't get 10 percent action point recovery and as a free-to-play player somebody who's going to be chaining barbarians a ton and who might run low on action points and you know as a player who's a lot of their value comes from action points right that's how you're going to get a lot of your gems and things like that from the barb chaining the 10 percent action point recovery here is going to be you know the most beneficial thing that you can basically get from any civilization as a free-to-play player now the other thing too is you get a five percent troop training speed which is nice this just means that in the same amount of time you're going to be able to train slightly more troops which is great and also it just so happens to be the case that Germany is a cavalry civilization so they are going to get five percent cav attack which is great and you get the Teutonic Knight which is a really powerful special unit for cavalry so overall Germany is a really great choice for free-to-play cavalry players and if you never ever switch away from Germany that's not even the end of the world right I mean you have the cav special unit and bonus like you could theoretically just stay as Germany permanently and you would be fine with that now the other thing that you have to consider though is Ottoman Empire and we talked about this also in the infantry video and that's just because yes you lose the special units and you lose the five percent attack which is not that big of a loss but you're gaining five percent skill damage and five percent march speed which are basically the two most important stats for open field pvp especially as a free-to-play player a lot of your damage comes from skill damage when you're running cavalry commanders and so that's going to be absolutely crucial and march speed you know you already are fast in the open field but having that extra five percent could just push you a little bit farther and might be the difference between running away from an enemy chasing you and not and so realistically ottoman empire is probably in the very late game your best open field EVP choice and also you're going to be running only two cavalry marches one archer and one infantry march and so the Ottoman Empire bonuses this works for all the troop types basically the march speed and the skill damage is good for all four of your armies whereas if you're running Germany then the five percent cav attack and special unit is only good for two of your armies right your cavalry armies when it comes to the best city skins for cavalry players first of all you know when you're choosing an epic skin obviously you just want to go for anything that gives you a cavalry bonus and ideally removes some form of archer or infantry attack mighty forest is definitely one of the best choices for cavalry in the epic tier and the glorious siam i don't know if i pronounced that correctly is probably the best epic skin for cavalry in my opinion sacred sanctuary is also a really good choice when it comes to legendary skins at your disposal like i mentioned in the infantry video you really shouldn't be competing in any zenith of power events unless you know for sure you can get it and it also coincides with maybe a mightiest governor that you really care about but really zenith of power is way too expensive for 99.9 percent .9 of free-to-play players and really the extra stats is not something that is a game changer right really you should just leave those zenith of power skins to the rally and garrison leaders of your kingdom or continent realistically however the best choice for city skin for cavalry players is going to be the twilight falls city skin this is because it gives you five percent skill damage at the cost of ten percent infantry attack and like i said earlier losing infantry attack as a cavalry player is not a big deal at all this is basically almost no penalty realistically and the five percent skill damage is going to be really great for all of your armies not just your cavalry cavalry but especially their cavalry because they do deal a lot of skill damage so if you can get your hands on Twilight Falls this is probably the best choice for you for open field PvP okay now let's move on to talking about your commander upgrade order and first we're going to start with the very early game before kvk1 and up through kvk1 what epic commanders or epic pairings should you be focusing on and by bars is going to be a king for you he is the best epic commander for cavalry in the game the reason for this is because he has a five target one thousand damage factor aoe and the targets lose 50 percent march speed for two seconds it's a very powerful slowdown especially in the early game and especially this 1000 damage factor is just insane on top of that he gives you 20 percent attack this skill does basically nothing but the fourth skill gives you 50 percent march speed for 10 seconds and a small healing factor when you exit combat so this isn't that big of a deal really all you're doing with by bars is just 
massive aoe damage and that's it he doesn't bring anything else to the table and the best commanders to pair him with are first of all sun tzu sun tzu obviously is an infantry commander but as a secondary he's just going to deal more aoe skill damage he also gives a skill damage bonus to both himself and by bars which is really nice and your by bars is going to take 10 percent less damage when your sun tzu is behind him so really great pairing there if you want a pure cavalry epic march then you could put belisarius behind your by bars you don't want belisarius primary necessarily for pvp because the mobility tree is not great for pvp your damage output is going to really suffer when you compare it to the skill tree that being said sometimes you would run belisarius primary and by bars secondary if you are going into enemy territory as a stealth march and you want to just kill farmers so you can basically just flip the order of these commanders depending on what you're doing most of the time for pvp you'll run by bars primary belisarius is a really nice compliment to him because he gives you 30 percent cavalry defense so that's the a little bit of tankiness that by bars doesn't normally have he also gains even more march speed when he's exiting combat so you can see the synergy there which is nice and you have a really powerful debuff on the active skill for belisarius basically the target loses 60 percent of stats for two seconds which is wild and the fourth skill here is nuts you deal 25 percent more damage when your enemy has less than 50 percent units remaining huge damage bonus so if you can chase those yellow and red marches belisarius is great now i know this video is mainly for for free to play players but if you're watching this and you're a small low spender or a medium spender Minamoto is actually an insanely good pickup in the early game like right when you start the game if you can get a 5511 Minamoto that is an insane combo and the great news is that you actually can lock his first two skills to guarantee that upgrade so it's not even like it's a gamble you can guarantee get 5511 I think it's about 30 US dollars that's from buying the VIP bundles if you buy the correct ones and in case you're wondering it's 10 sculptures to summon him and then 190 sculptures to get that 5511 configuration so buy your vip bundles accordingly to save the most amount of money but i can't stress this enough if you are a lower mid spender you probably should get minamoto in the early game he transitions really well in the season of conquest at least for your first one and is also one of the reasons why cavalry is not only good for free to play players but is even better for mid and low spenders because of minamoto which is great when it comes to tau tau you can replace your belisarius or your sun tzu with tau tau as the secondary to your buy bars if you can get his first skill to five and his third skill to let's say three or five ideally it would be five that's just going to give you a ton of single target damage powerful debuff nice march speed and attack bonus but that's just going to come down to luck of the draw and whether or not you can get those uh skill upgrades from your gold keys that you're opening up or again if you're a lower mid spender i think tau tau is the first thing that you can get from the daily special offer you could buy those bundles every day so that's something to consider tau tau is great in the early game minamoto ages much better than tau tau to be honest with you but you will still get some use out of him regardless all right with the very beginner stuff and anecdotal stuff out of the way what's the first legendary commander that you're going to actually be investing in as a cavalry player and surprise surprise nothing has changed here it's still going to be Richard the first with his first skill to five and the rest of his skills to one okay just unlock these last skills that's all you need the first skill is the main thing that you want to focus on it's 10 sculptures to summon Richard from his wheel of fortune and then it's I think 50 sculptures to get this first skill to five and that's going to be really important for the longevity of your account you're going to use Richard the first a ton for chaining barbarians in home kingdom lost kingdom basically everywhere Richard is an insanely good PVE commander he's a great tank for tons of different events and especially in Sunset Canyon and Lost Canyon Golden Kingdom things like that like you're really going to get a lot of value out of this super cheap investment you might be able to use him as PVP in KVK one but he's really not a great PVP commander especially beyond that so just keep that in mind next we have to talk about Yi. now again I did just make a video recently talking about why I don't love Yi as an early game investment for free to play players anymore I think he's extremely expensive and as soon as you hit KVK three and season of conquest he's instantly outclassed by multiple different commanders even amongst the archer tier and you're really going to wish that you had those 690 sculptures to invest in a couple of different places as well so if you're watching this video and you're asking yourself should you get Isang Ye first of all I would recommend at least unlocking him when his wheel of fortune comes around that's 10 sculptures and the reason for this is because there is a museum system in the game 
and it is possible that they could add a third relic tier for Isong Ye. And if they do that, who knows what else they could do here? They could bump these stats up more. They could give him a third stat. Who knows? It might be worth just having him on your account just in case they do something insane with that. But the only people that should be expertising Isong Ye are players that are very hardcore free to play players, players who have three or four farm accounts, players who are going to be participating in a really effective jumper project who are really going to focus on winning kvk1 like most players are not going to go through all that effort right like you're gonna have to be playing two three four hours a day just to keep your account up to speed and to get enough sculptures otherwise not worth it skippy song a and that is that and really your 5111 richard in the early game is the only investment that you're going to make unless you purchase minamoto and this is kind of where i just want to pause and say that being a cavalry main for free-to-play players has sort of the slowest progression in terms of early game and mid game because you're really you don't have any good choices for commanders to invest in for your first like seven months of playing the game right like all the commander choices that you have are pretty much garbage okay but once you hit the late game your patience is rewarded by giving you some of the very best late game commanders at your disposal so that's why i say that if you're a lower medium spender it's even better for you because you're gonna have minamoto and that's gonna be really great plus when you get into season of conquest the relic for minamoto in the museum is 60 percent of stats which is just absolutely wild lots of legendary commanders don't even have that many stats and that's not even taking into account that he already has stats on his on his skills right so for free to play players you're gonna have to just be patient okay so what does that mean what do you do in the early and mid game as a free to play player if you don't have any great commanders to invest in first of all focus on getting your city hall to 25 if you haven't done that already you need your city hall at 25 to unlock tier 5 units eventually and you also can't even go into the lost kingdom unless you have city hall 25 so absolutely crucial and you also want to be focusing on your vip level okay a lot of players ignore their vip level they just want to get to tier 5 units as fast as possible but I'm telling you guys, you know, you want to be farming a lot of gems, get your VIP 10. Okay. That's when you're going to get one legendary commander sculpture every single day. And that is going to absolutely change the progression of your account. That is so important. VIP 12 gives you two and VIP 14, I believe is what gives you three. Exactly. So focus on those three things, maxing your buildings, maxing your tech and getting your VIP at least to 10, if not 12 or higher. Now, if you are extremely impatient in the mid game and you absolutely must invest in something to keep your interest in the game if you're just so bored there's nothing to do you want at least one commander to invest in the only choice is saladin every other commander in the early game like i said is garbage saladin you get him in kvk2 and he is decent five 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 one you do not need to expertise saladin which is actually really great and this is another reason why for low to mid spenders who maybe have more sculptures than the free-to-play players they might be able to make that saladin investment without feeling horrible about it again 95 percent of players should be skipping saladin entirely he does not age as well as he used to although he is still really good in season of conquest the problem is his single target damage factor is just so low and also the march speed debuff here is just greatly outclassed by march speed debuffs from other commanders like liu che and like huo and that's the thing about universal sculptures is that you can use that one sculpture on saladin or you could use that one sculpture on huo and huo has a 2700 damage factor single target which is basically double that of saladin and his march speed debuff is 50 percent for three seconds, whereas Saladin's is 30% for five seconds. So a little bit longer, but a little bit worse. The defense and attack is nice here. And also he takes 30% less skill damage and 20% less counter attack damage. So he is one of the more tanky cavalry units in the game. And at 5551, he's pretty cheap. Plus he also has his relic here, which gives him even more attack and some nice March speed. This could get double relic in the future. So this could bump up to 15 or 20 for both of these. So keep that in mind. But I think the days of investing in Saladin as a 5551 commander are pretty much over but again if you just want something to build that you could use in season of conquest you could go for saladin if you must if you did get that minamoto then at least you have the minamoto saladin combo that you could pair together and that's going to be a pretty tanky pair that can pop off a ton of single target damage so but like i said unfortunately free to play not gonna have that option okay now let's move over to the tier maker so that way we can go over what the order should be when you finally hit season three of kvk and you start to invest in some actual good commanders what should that order look like well the first thing that you want to realize is that the first wheel of a fortune that you will get your hands on most likely is the cavalry choice wheel which means you're going to be able to choose 
which commander you want to work on and in that first wheel you're going to be able to unlock a lot of really good commanders first of all Nevsky is a great choice but you can also unlock Joan of Arc you can unlock Huo you can unlock uh, William and I wouldn't recommend some of the other choices but for that first wheel you have some of the best commanders at your disposal to at least unlock and of these four I would say the best first thing to invest in is a Nevsky okay Nevsky is such a powerful commander he has a really nice even spread of stats he also gives a bonus to skill damage and he has a decent single target damage factor on top of the fact that he has a really powerful defense reduction so even at something like five 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 one you're gonna have a really powerful commander with Nevsky as soon as you get that first wheel of fortune coming around and here is where you know if you invested in that Minamoto you slap Minamoto behind him and you have a super powerful single target damage machine especially with the relic on Minamoto that's really really amazing if you don't have the Minamoto then you have a couple of different options first of all if you went for the YSG you could try it it is very squishy just keep that in mind it, this is you know some people have done this it's okay I prefer the Scipio Prime YSG like we did in the infantry video I think that's a much better pair because they both have AoE here they don't so you lose a little bit of the skill damage value on the fourth skill of YSG but you could run this in a pinch similarly you could run the Mehmed behind him Mehmed's relic is also insane he also gives you some attack and health as universal he's also an AoE commander if you have him at 5511 or better then that's a good sort of emergency shoe in if you really need, need a PvP army and of course if you got the Saladin then you could run the Saladin with him as well however I think the best first pairing you should build is obviously Nevsky Joan I think this pairing has been around since basically the moment Joan entered the game this has been the tried and true cavalry pair and it shows no real signs of slowing down this is an insanely powerful army the fourth skill on Joan makes her active skill pop twice every other skill cycle and it is one of the most powerful AoEs in the game it's 2000 damage factor three target with some rage engine and some awesome stuff so really what I would recommend as a minimum viable build would be a 5551 Nevsky with a 5115 Joan of Arc Prime and this is where if you picked up any skill reset items along the way in the early game you can get some of them for free as a free to play player they're very rare you only get maybe one or two a year as a free to play player so please keep that in mind anytime you can get your hands on them you should get your hands on them and if you do get them use them on Joan Prime if you can't get the 5115 then you can settle for the 5x15 so basically the second skill whatever that lands at is good third skill doesn't matter that much so you know five five one five if you have to that would be like the most that I would go for Joan unless you're extremely unlucky or something like that you really want a fourth skill to five is what I'm trying to say eventually however you will expertise your Nevsky okay so I would say get Nevsky to five five one one or five 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 one then do the Joan five one one five or five five one five however you can get it then go back and finish the Nevsky and from there you're going to move on to your second pair and who would your second pair be and this is where we're going to branch out the next army that we're going to build is a Scipio Prime with Liu Che secondary the reason for this is they are both AoE commanders they both have infantry march speed they both have a ton of damage output on their kits and also the 30 percent health reduction on Scipio is insane the slowdown effect on the AoE from Liu Che is insane and also because he deals smite damage any commander that you're hitting in the open field that reduces the skill damage they take has no effect for Liu Che so he's gonna still be hitting them at full power which is really nice I think this pairing is probably it might be the most powerful open field combo in the game right now I would say get a 5551 CPO Prime and a 5515 Liu Che or however his skills land his last two they're pretty interchangeable in terms of effectiveness and then eventually you will want to expertise both of these commanders I do think that is worth it I think as a single infantry pair if you have both these expertise you're going to be able to run this pairing for a very long time probably years at this point it's just so insanely good that you're not you're not going to regret this I, I can't imagine you will once these two commanders are expertise then you're going to go and work on you guessed it an archer march and that's going to be Liu Liang primary with Herman Prime secondary Liu Liang at 5511 is the minimum Herman Prime at 5551 is the minimum eventually you will expertise the Liu Liang and the Herman prime is up to you he's a little bit tankier at expertise he's just a little bit better at expertise to be honest with you but you know if you're finding that he's useful at 5551 you don't need to expertise him then fine leave him there otherwise an expertise here probably you won't hate it you probably won't regret it but at 5551 that is good value this is definitely the best archer march in the game right now and it is a contender for one of the best open field marches in the entire game period the reason that we're going for one of each troop type in a cavalry video is because like I said earlier in the video you're going to 
to be collecting blueprints for a bunch of different troop types you're going to be collecting armaments for all the different troop types and some of these other commanders that aren't cavalry are just so insanely good that you just need them also the herman prime spreading his poison is going to make the skill damage from all your other commanders hit even harder so like the support here is insane the support on the health debuff here is insane so you have to think about how these all work as a unit you're just going to perform much better if you have one of each troop type next you can move on to your fourth and arguably final pair it's no a no-brainer that huo is going to be the prime primary commander here and at the time of recording this video the best commander to pair him with is William William is a bit of an older commander at this point and I do suspect over the next perhaps six months we will almost definitely get a new release cycle for cavalry meaning we're going to get a new mightiest governor commander and a new wheel of fortune commander for cavalry and one of those commanders if not both might be more powerful than William in this investment guide and so if you're watching this video in June or July of 2024 or later then keep that in mind look at who the newest commanders are for cavalry and more than likely one of them will be paired with your huo instead of the william with that being said though and because that's only speculation what we know at the time of recording this video is that huo william pops off this is a great combination i run this okay you can run the 5551 five, huo or 5515 five, five, depending on how you want to do it and then the william only needs to be 5551 five, as well so you could technically build a pretty value budget build here and put you know all your best cavalry gear on your one march and your second rate gear on the secondary march eventually you probably want the huo expertise that's just my opinion i think huo like all of his skills are really solid he's great in the open field he pumps out a ton of single target damage i mean 2700 is just wild especially because his rage cost is lowered right so it's 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 insane and william is another one of those supportive marches where he's going to give your other armies and allies a bonus to defense and some rage over time rage per second so realistically this is a great great second cavalry pairing and if you get this right now if you have this at the time of recording this and posting this video you're basically done this if you're a cavalry main you've got all the best armies that you could possibly get the question is if you move on to five armies then yes you'll be thinking about something like Zhang Yu but again I don't think you should be focusing on building a fifth march I think you should use this fifth army slot to grab a rune to join a rally to join a garrison there's a ton of different things you can do and make use out of that last army slot you don't necessarily need to be fielding with five armies all the time that's very expensive to do so especially with tier five units you're probably not going to be able to sustain that as a free-to-play player so if anything you know as new commanders come into the game later down the line perhaps some of these other commanders can move into that fifth slot Lot, and then you could maybe build another army later if you really really want to but for right now I would stick to just this and you're going to be golden okay with the commanders out of the way let's talk about your equipment and the order with which you should upgrade that equipment of course what you see on the screen here is your entry level cavalry build okay you see eventually you'll get a full special talent on everything but you're running the two-piece halberd set this gives you a ton of cavalry stats for green pieces which is insane you have the cavalry helmet and three windswept pieces here you're going to get a little bit of calf stats and also some march speed out of that which is really nice moving on you're going to upgrade those windswept pieces to the purple pieces this is going to give you a ton of both defense attack and some health and then from there you're actually going to replace the halberd set with the purple pieces so here you have the gladiator legs which give you more health as well with the special talent which is nice and the heart of the saint which gives you a ton of cavalry defense this is a really good weapon the weapons in this game are very expensive as pieces to craft so the fact that cavalry has a really powerful weapon that you don't necessarily need to switch over to legendary as soon as possible is really great this is a great mid game build from there you are going to replace your first two pieces to legendary are going to be the chest piece and the boots these two pieces both give you cavalry health which is really really impressive and you're going to get the two piece set bonus when you go ahead and do that so when it comes to bang for your buck these two pieces are the best to replace you're going to notice here that we're still running the blue helmet that's how good that blue helmet is and eventually you will replace it okay you replace the helmet and the weapon i would say helmet first then weapon later this is going to give you some cab defense and the weapon gives you some cavalry attack now you've got a four piece set bonus here for cavalry which is nice as you're going to see you have four pieces here that give you cavalry health which is insane so a ton of really tanky stats here we have like i said earlier in the video navar's control gloves and the ash of the dawn for the legs these both can be obtained in the crystal keys so you don't even need to or you really would never run a six piece set bonus 
blueprints for cavalry anyway and the reason that you would upgrade these to last although you know if you have the blueprints and you can upgrade them then go for it but the reason you go for it last is because this only has half a point more of stats than the gladiator talented legs that we replaced it from right and of ours control replaces you know this has attack and health this has all health but it's basically the same number of stats pretty much so those are the least impactful upgrades now when it comes to your iconic upgrades for these pieces of course putting the iconic crystal in the legs and in the boots is going to give you the base health bonus which is going to be the most impactful from from a basically a tier one perspective but beyond that I think you want to go for your weapon first okay the reason for this is because it gives you upwards of two percent damage to troops on the map whereas if you look at other pieces like the helmet or the chest those only give you one percent extra damage and really the bottleneck here is most likely going to be the blueprint so in order to get two percent damage on the map from upgrading both these pieces you would need one two and three additional blueprints for both of these so that is six legendary blueprints whereas for this you only need one two three so it's half the amount of blueprints of course the upgrade materials and stuff are going to be a little bit higher because it is the weapon compared to the helmet and the chest but like I said blueprints will most likely be the bottleneck here so you get the most bang for your buck on the upgrades to the weapon in my opinion plus also ignoring enemy defense and having more units is really impactful after the weapon I really like upgrading the boots here I know that you get cavalry attack which is not that impactful but I think the five percent March speed for a free-to-play player is going to be really really nice beyond that the leg actually give you for cavalry one percent damage on the map which is nice plus more cavalry health which is great after that I would say the chest and the helmet probably deserve the most attention and then at the very back of the pack is probably the gloves now one thing that I want to point out here with the awakening and with the iconic tears is that like I said before the bottleneck is probably going to be the blueprints and so more than likely you know if you can do a specific upgrade for your cavalry then you probably should just do it like if you're going into kvk if you can make that upgrade is it worth upgrading or holding off until you get the correct next upgrade it's really hard to say most likely you'll want to just do the upgrade right especially if it's a piece that you got lucky and you got the special talent like that's going to be a really big factor and with that being said that's pretty much going to do it guys if you made it to the end of this video drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton it'll really it'll push this video out into the youtube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it and while you're down there consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time that I upload a rise of kingdoms video comment down below your thoughts on cavalry as a main choice for free to play players I would love to hear from you down there what your thoughts are and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been Omniarch I will talk to you guys again soon peace